In the last lesson, I showed how easy it is to mess up a C program just by reading some user input from the command prompt. In that lesson, I used the scanf function. Now let's see if I can find a better function, one that will protect my program from the sorts of errors I was getting with scanf. I'm Hugh. This is another lesson in my course on programming C using Visual Studio. In this lesson, I'll explain what a buffer is, why they overflow, and what you can do to avoid that. Apart from scanf, one of the traditional ways of reading user input is with getS. On the plus side, the getS function is a bit safer than scanf because it only reads string data, string data and nothing but string data. If I wanted the user to enter a number, I would have to do some processing of the string and convert it into a number at a later stage. That takes more work than just reading a number using scanf, but it's worth the effort because it gives me the chance to verify that the data makes sense before I try to use it. With scanf, if the data is the wrong type, it's already too late to do anything about it because scanf has already assigned it to a variable. Even so, getS is still considered to be an unsafe function. That's because, just like scanf, it may try to read in more string data than you've actually allocated memory to hold it. Let's look at an example. This runs this code here, uh, which reads my first name and my last name using getS. So let's run it and see what happens. Enter my first name and my last name. Well, it looks okay at first sight, but again, uh, when I look at the message in Visual Studio, I can see that there's a runtime check failure stuck around variable last name was corrupted. So that's the same problem I had when I tried to read in too much string data using scanf. The stack has once again been corrupted. Now, as I mentioned before, the results you see when compiling for debugging can often be significantly different from the results you see when compiling for release. There are several reasons for that. The debug configuration may deliberately add certain protections to avoid some problems, while the release configuration may do all kinds of code optimizations, which again have different side effects. Well, let's try this out. I'm going to stop this and I'll recompile and run it this time with the release configuration. And let's see if we get anything different. Once again, first name. And my second name. And this time the bug is far more obvious. Some of the characters from my second name, you can see here, have overwritten the characters from my first name. But why did that happen? Quite simply, it's because my string variables, or rather my arrays of characters, since C doesn't have a dedicated string data type, well, they've been declared to hold eight characters each. That's fine for my first name, as Hugh, H-U-W, has only three characters. GetS reads in those three characters and adds on a null character, which is C's way of marking the end of a string. So that's four characters in total, which easily fits into this eight-character array. But my second name, Collingborn, has 13 characters, 14 when you include the null at the end. When my program reads those characters into the last name array, I have five characters too many. So where did they go? The answer is they go into the computer memory in places where they have no right to be. Think of it this way. My last name array has been declared to be eight characters long. So my program has set aside eight character sized chunks of memory, like this. When I read eight characters into a variable, those eight character sized chunks are occupied by eight actual characters, like this. But then I keep on reading in more characters. So some additional character sized chunks of memory are used to store them, like this. But since by declaring the last name variable to have room for just eight characters, the extra characters have to be written into memory locations which have not been reserved for them. 
In this case, the last five characters of my name, O-U-R-N-E, plus the null character that's appended by get s, all those characters get written somewhere in memory beyond the end of the eight-character chunk of memory that I reserved for the last name variable. Now let's see if I can figure out where those characters went. In this code, I've added these two variables up here, and they store the addresses of the two strings. You can see that uh, I assign the addresses to them down here, first name and last name. And this code here prints those addresses in both decimal, that's here, and in hexadecimal, as here. Now, hexadecimal is more standard in C for displaying addresses, but decimal makes it easier to see how many actual bytes of memory separate one variable from the other, and that's what we want to observe very closely when I run this. So let's try it out, and once again I'll enter my name. And once again, I have the problem here. Now let's look at these addresses. You can see the address of the first name variable, that's up here looking at the decimal representation, is eight bytes away from the address of the last name variable. Now this would be different if I'd compiled it for x64 with debugging. Here I've deliberately selected x86 because the sizes are smaller, which make it easier to see what's going on and the release configuration does not provide protection against memory corruption, so that lets me show you exactly why this problem occurs. Now let's look at what's stored at the addresses of the first name and last name variables. I'm going to use a spreadsheet to show you this. Last name I can see is at this address, 6224680. I'm going to copy that and load up Excel, and here I'll just put that address into that cell. So this is the address where last name is stored. It's actually where the string begins, the first character of my surname, C. And then I could put the subsequent addresses down below. Uh, let me just increment them by one because each character is going to take one byte. And so on for the 13 characters of my surname, well, Excel will increment that automatically if I drag this down to 13. All right, to save time, I've now filled in the rest of my name here with each character one byte uh, higher up in memory from the character preceding it. Now let's have a look at the output window again and find out where my first name is. So I entered first name Hugh, first name address is this 6224688. So that's down for 688. So that's this address, and this is what I entered. H U W. But as we can see, what is actually stored at that address by the time the program has been completed are these letters from my surname. O U R N E. You can see that is exactly what I've got at those addresses in the spreadsheet. So I can see that the extra characters I read in for the last name, that's these addresses, have overflowed the array that I declared for them. And those characters have been written into the memory locations that contain the characters of my first name. At these locations, where H was before is now O, then U, R, N, and E. And that is exactly what we see when I've run the program in the command window. Incidentally, while I'm showing you this in the spreadsheet to try to make it really obvious what's going on, you can get the same information by looking at variables in the Visual Studio memory window. And you can view that by selecting Debug Windows, and then going down to one of the memory windows down here. And it pops up up here. Now, this shows you the memory that's being used by your program, and you can search for variables by name. So I can put in first name, and it shows me that it's at this address, uh, which is here displayed in hexadecimal. Now I can see the data that's stored there. You can see this over here, O-U-R-N-E. And that is in fact exactly the same information that I showed in the spreadsheet. It's what has overflowed from the last name into the first name variable uh, at that address. 
in hexadecimal this is this address but that's equivalent to the address shown in decimal and it's exactly this data that's overflown o u r n e now if you've been paying close attention you may have noticed one curious thing about all this the overflowing data from the second variable last name writes over the data of the first variable first name and yet the first variable is both declared and initialized before the second variable. So why don't the extra characters flow over into some as yet unused bit of memory? That is, from low memory locations for first name to higher memory locations for last name. If I look at the addresses of the variables, I can see that first name is in fact stored at a higher address. The number is bigger than last name. To understand why that is, and why it results in this particular sort of memory corruption, you need to understand the stack, and how the stack grows as data is added to it. That's the subject of the next lesson. Thanks for watching. To be notified whenever I upload new lessons, subscribe to my channel and click the bell. To follow this course in order, bookmark the playlist which is shown under this video.